Hi, this is Kendall Boyson, professional life and recovery coach, and you're listening to Encouragementology, the practice of instilling hope. Hi there. Thanks for joining me. On this show, we aren't relying on rubbing the lamp, three wishes, or even luck to change our lives. We're taking control by changing our mindset and changing our direction. Too many times, we've left it up to chance, waiting for a rainy day or a sign that never comes. So we wait, all the while ignoring our power to activate real action in our lives. Forge forward with a renewed mind and the motivation we need to propel us forward. The mind is a terrible thing to waste, so let's tap in and see where it takes us. Ready to throw the genie lamp on the heap and make our own dreams come true? So let's be honest. How many times do you say, when I win the lottery, I'm going to do X, Y, Z? Now, just for fun. How many of you actually play the lottery? Why do we put things we would love to do into this futuristic bubble that we will never pop? Sometimes it's fun fantasizing about what life could look like. Remember when you were young and you played those games? Where you were going to live, what kind of house you would have, what kind of car you would drive, who you would marry, and how many kids you would have. How about the magic eight ball? Yes, no, maybe, outlook not good, signs point to yes. At one point early in life, you thought everything and anything was within your reach. Then you were told no, 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 and you started to doubt yourself. Reality hit and you realized or believed that not everything was possible So those things became fantasies or pipe dreams. You put them in the bubble and thought of them less and less. You accepted that it just wasn't in the cards. What if you could change your mindset and revisit some of those dreams? Okay, maybe you can't go to the moon. Sorry, little astronaut. But you can seek adventure and curb your appetite for exploration. And that's just the start. What if we figured out why those dreams were appealing to you in the first place to uncover obtainable ways to get that same feeling now? You were always in the kitchen with your mother, helping with dinner or baking goodies. You had aspirations of being a great chef one day, and now you answer phones in an office. What happened? Who cares? What you should ask yourself is, what do I love about cooking or baking? Maybe it's the relaxing process of putting ingredients together to make something delicious. Or the rewarding feeling from seeing others enjoy your food. It could have been the warm and fuzzy feeling you remember about spending quality time with your mother. The why is important to uncover no matter what the dream is. I asked my adult son what he enjoyed doing as a way to uncover a possible career choice. He said, playing video games. Insert eye roll. I know, I know. The conversation could have stopped there with me berating him for not taking my question seriously. But instead, I calmly said, okay, tell me more about that. What specifically do you like about playing video games? Through this line of questioning, I found out he liked playing video games with others online, being part of a team, having a project where they all work together, accomplishing a goal, and the feeling of a successful outcome. He liked that projects were varied, so he wasn't always doing the same thing each time. This created a passion for problem solving and critical thinking. My point is, don't get stuck with a surface-level answer, even your own. Dig into the details to understand the why. One approach to changing your mindset and therefore heading in a new direction would be to find that why in other aspects of your life. 
At this stage of your life, you don't want to go to culinary school or relocate to get access to finer dining. How else could you use your passion for cooking to fulfill your dreams? Maybe you could host dinner parties for your friends and family. You could make baked goods and have a bake sale to raise money for charity. Maybe you could contact a local restaurant to see if they would be interested in featuring one of your desserts once a month. Change your mindset, change your direction, change your life. sidestep for a moment. The first step in changing your mindset is in the awareness that you, in fact, need to change your mindset. Over at Keep Inspiring Me, I found an article by Quincy Seal, Nine Signs It's Time to Change Your Mindset. Listen to this quote by Steve Marabola, The Power of One. Today, you have the opportunity to transcend from a disempowered mindset of existence to an empowered reality of purpose-driven living. Today is a new day that has been handed to you for shaping. You have the tools. Now, get out there and create a masterpiece. At the heart of this quote, you will find that regardless of what is currently happening in your life, The way you perceive your life is what makes you happy or unhappy. If negative assumptions or beliefs are consuming you, then you will be unhappy. On the other hand, if you have a positive mindset, even when navigating tough times, then you will be happy. Ultimately, perception is your reality. So changing the way you look at your life can make the difference. But how can you know when your mindset is faulty? It can be hard to tell when the negative thoughts are outside yourself or inside your psyche. That's part of the problem with negative mindsets. It clouds your judgment. Thankfully, there are some red flags to alert you when it might be time to improve your thoughts and mindset. So here are nine. Number one. You are constantly focusing on what's wrong. Do you find yourself always fixating on your worries and disappointments, but never thinking about the things that are actually going your way? This is a sure sign that your mindset is contaminated with negativity. There may be a lot of bad things happening right now, but odds are that at least some aspects of your life are in good shape. Taking time to be thankful for those things is important because it helps you keep the bad from completely overwhelming your perspective. If you become blind to the good things, you may lose them or not use them to your advantage. Number two, you mourn your failures but forget to celebrate your victories. William J. H. Boecker, a motivational speaker, said, The difficulties and struggles of today are but the price we must pay for the accomplishments and victories of tomorrow. Do you find yourself feeling angry and despondent whenever you suffer a loss, but glossing over your victories? When you don't take the time to celebrate the moment when something goes your way, it's because on a conscious or unconscious level, you don't believe in your victory. You believe underneath it is concealing a seed of failure. When you do this, you continuously are sending yourself a very negative message. You believe that you will always fail and that you can't celebrate victories because they're all just future failures in disguise. This is a really poor way to live your life because not only do you miss out on all of life's precious, beautiful moments, but you spit on life itself and on your own ingenuity, luck, and achievements. But I don't want to take anything for granted, you might reply. That is a good thing, but there is a third path, and that is gratitude. Remember, constantly casting doubts on your own victories is ungrateful. Believe you are capable of real victory. Some things do last. Number three, 
You don't want to face the truth. Complaining about reality is not going to change it. You can rage all day about the rain clouds, but it's not going to bring out the sun. It is good to have a sense of justice to appreciate what things should be. But, in a way, relentlessly complaining is a refusal to acknowledge and accept the truth. There are simply some things you cannot change. Not everything is under your control. And there is no bigger mistake than refusing to see the world for what it is because that is the point where you can no longer tell fact from fiction. Take action to change the things that you can. Speak the truth when you see an injustice, but accept that the world will never be fair as much as maybe it should be. Until you can accept the fact and change your mindset, it will never be realistic and you will always be plagued by resentment that your expectations are not being met. Number four, you feel angry when your expectations are not met. This leads directly to another red flag. If you're constantly finding that the world or people in your life or even you are not meeting your expectations, it most likely means your expectations are unrealistic to begin with. Our expectations are a huge part of our mindset. They're what we believe to be possible or necessary. Expectations lay the groundwork for our experiences. If you have unrealistically high expectations, nothing ever satisfies you. For example, if you set out after college expecting to be a millionaire by the age of 30 and you find yourself nowhere near that benchmark by 25, well, you're probably pretty miserable. But are you really miserable because you're not a millionaire? or because you've not achieved what you expected by that age. This all comes back to seeing the world as it truly is. Maybe you are gifted and ambitious, and maybe in a perfect world you would have made your first million by now. But we don't live in a perfect world, and with all the gifts and ambition in the world, you cannot control every factor. That's why it's important to adjust your mindset to survive and thrive in such a world. Number five, you feel unsatisfied and unhappy with everything you have or don't have. The downside of ambition is that it often blinds us to the wonderful things and people we already have in our life. Maybe you want a bigger home or a more expensive car, but can you remember when you didn't even have a home or a car? Maybe you wish you had more friends while disregarding the value in the friends you have now. There is always more to strive for, but for this reason, more can never truly satisfy us. It always leaves a hole that is impossible to fill. The author Janine Roth said, you will never stop wanting more until you allow yourself to have what you already have, to take it in, savor it. Now is a good time to do that. We're up to number six. You find yourself regularly coming to blows with the people you care about. If you're constantly disagreeing with the people you love, it's a bad sign. It's a sign that your mindset may need some work, especially if you trust those people and respect and value their opinions. Your arguments with them may reflect more on you than on them. Try to see where they're coming from. It could change your mind for the better. Number seven, you think about what you have to do instead of what you get to do. When you find yourself viewing everything as an inconvenience instead of as a welcome opportunity, it usually means that you're no longer appreciating what you have. I have to do all this work is a tempting statement when you're tired, but you get to do all this work. Not everyone does. Work feeds you and keeps you alive and keeps the enjoyable things in your life accessible. So remember, to appreciate your work 
even when it feels burdensome. Number eight, you see yourself as a victim. The problem with seeing yourself as a victim doesn't come from the fact that it is necessarily inaccurate. Sometimes you really have been victimized by bad people or unfortunate circumstances. Constantly viewing yourself as a victim does not empower you to change or build a better life for yourself. Even if you were the victim, overcome this low self-esteem by making a decision to reject that role and start creating something better. You deserve it. And number nine, you hold on to the dramas of other people. Sometimes the negative mindsets we find ourselves struggling with do not reflect us as much as they reflect the messages we've received throughout our lives. Maybe your parents told you that you shouldn't pursue your passions. Or maybe you had a negative partner in your past who made you feel you were never good enough. If the dramas inside your head sound familiar and you catch echoes of voices that are not yours, it may be time to let them go. Those dramas belong to those other people and reflect their judgments and perceptions, not yours. To change your mindset is not easy, but it is one of the most powerful things you can do. Learning how to recognize a negative mindset is the first step. Once you do, you will be empowered to make those changes and start seeking out the positive. Doing this can often turn your entire life around. Encouragementology is the practice of instilling hope. And this show is all about finding positive alternatives to life's challenges. An overarching theme in everything I do is finding and activating your power. Life can be harsh if you let it. There's negativity at every turn. The perception is that we elevate and celebrate struggle more than success. Drama, fear, and tragedy are what sells. So heartwarming and inspirational are left to the dodo on Instagram. Puppies from the street to a loving household and we weep. We long for a good, feel-good story. It's what our heart craves. Create your own heartwarming and inspirational story. Unplug from the negative. Activate your power. Propel your life forward. And then share your story with others. I found some help to change your mindset and achieve your goals from 7mindsets.com. If you've ever had goals and dreams that didn't come true, well, you're not alone. An incredible 92% of people say that the goals and resolutions they set for themselves each year are never achieved. With stats this high, there must be something in common that's holding them back. After studying the 8% who do accomplish their goals, I have some answers about exactly what these high achievers do differently. It's important to note that these 8% come from all walks of life. They can be married, single, or divorced, highly educated, or high school dropouts, middle class, wealthy, or even poor by most standards. They're comprised of a variety of ages and ethnicities from all over the world. The fact is, no matter where you are in your life or where you came from, you've got the ability to set big goals and achieve them. The key commonality among the top 8% is a similar set of success-oriented mindsets that guide their thoughts and actions. You may share some of these, Or you may actually be practicing opposite mindsets without even realizing it. A surefire way to determine whether you need a mindset tune-up is to answer this question. 
Are you regularly accomplishing your goals and living your dreams? If you answered yes, well, there you go. If you said no, hmm, these steps could be game-changing for you. So here are seven ideas. Number one, accept that your thinking needs adjusting. That's a big one, isn't it? Just the acceptance that maybe we're not thinking in the correct mindset. I mean, we've all had goals and dreams that didn't unfold the way we hoped or expected. When this happens repeatedly, we start to wonder what we need to change. But rarely do we look inside at our own thinking as a place to start making changes. We live in a skill set driven society that emphasizes learning new skills and improving the ones we're weakest at. This often fosters the belief that we need more education in order to achieve our goals. Some people go back to school, others take seminars and workshops or read books, always looking for that silver bullet skill set that will make everything fall into place. Don't get me wrong, I'm not downplaying the value of skill sets, but more often it's our mindsets that need adjustment. The good news is it's a lot less expensive and much faster to change your mindset than to go learn a new skill. So step one is simply to acknowledge that you're going to work on your mindset first. Number two, identify your counter mindsets. Mindsets are formed through prior experiences and emotional milestones, and the mindsets that aren't producing the results you want are called counter-mindsets. Some examples of these are self-doubt, limiting beliefs, and any other negative thought that gets in your way of fulfillment. Around 65,000 thoughts go through our minds each day. Unfortunately, in the case of most people, the majority of them are negative. These automatic negative thoughts occur so often that you're probably not even aware that you're having them. For example, you know that little voice that points out irresponsible spending choices when you're looking at your monthly budget? Or makes disparaging comments when you look in the mirror? We all know that voice. It makes you hesitate before approaching someone you'd like to meet. It makes you think twice before starting a business or considering a career change. All of us have automatic negative thoughts, or the acronym ANTS. And without knowing it, we're habitually allowing them to destroy our dreams. It's hard to remain positive when that little voice is constantly spouting off and saying things like, I can't talk to her, I'm not smart enough, I'm out of shape, I'm not qualified, yada, yada, yada. The way to start exterminating the ants in your head is to begin paying attention to them. Notice when you hear that disparaging voice and recognize how frequently it happens. More than likely, you'll find that your limiting thoughts can be narrowed down to just a few key themes. Taking note of this is a major step because we can't change what we haven't acknowledged. Number three, flip the switch. Once you've identified your top negative thoughts, you need a way to stop them from holding you back. The best technique I know for this is something I call flip the switch, which moves thoughts from negative to positive. For years, every time I looked in the mirror, all I saw were my flaws. Finally, I started practicing the exact opposite reaction, flipping the switch. I'd look in the mirror and force myself to say, you look good. It took some time to get used to, but the reality is that positive thoughts and negative thoughts can occupy the same space. So I was giving my aunts an eviction notice. Another technique I find effective is called the if-then approach. Once you identify when your ants typically show up, allow a thought process that allows you to essentially think yourself past them. Here's an example. Say you plan to go for a walk after dinner to get more exercise, but when dinner's over, your ant shows up. 
automatic negative thought. If you start to hear that voice in your head that says you're too tired, too full, or you'll never lose that weight anyway, then walk to the closet immediately and put on your running shoes. Often, just taking one positive step in the right direction is enough to shut down those ants. Prepare yourself by creating a list of if-then statements ahead of time. Number four, understand your why. Changing your mindset takes work because formed habits aren't easy to break. This is especially true since many of our most harmful habits and counter mindsets were established when we were kids, and we've been doing these things that way ever since. Understanding your why is about starting fresh and deciding on one goal or dream that when you achieve it will mean a transformational change. Losing weight, being happier at work, improving your relationship with your companion. Identify something that could make a huge impact on your life. After all, if it's going to take work to make it come true, it better be really meaningful, right? Once you identify what your why is, Write it down on paper, in a notebook, why it really matters to you. Not on a computer, on paper, in your own handwriting. This is an important part of building your motivation. Number five, realize that motivation and willpower are not enough. Most people incorrectly believe that motivation and willpower are all that's needed to achieve their goals. And no wonder they do, since it's common advice you hear from friends and family, from motivational gurus to life coaches. Now, I asked you to write down your big why in step four, because that's where the motivation begins. But we all know that motivation can be hard to maintain, no matter how important your goal may be. And that's when willpower is supposed to kick in. The latest brain research reveals that willpower is like a gas tank. You start with a full tank, but you deplete your supply each time you use it. Here's what I mean. You're trying to eat healthier. Then you get to work and find Girl Scout cookies next to the fruit pole. What do you do? Tap into your willpower and resist the cookies? Good for you. Then you plan to go to the gym after work, but end up staying later to deal with a customer issue. Your willpower is already depleted, and the added stress of not following your original plan doesn't help. Do you end up going to the gym? You know the answer, because it's happened to all of us. It doesn't take long to simply give up and abandon your goals when you rely on motivation and willpower to achieve them. They aren't enough. That's why 25% of people give up on their goal after the first week and 60% quit after the first month. High achievers understand this reality, which is why step five is simply about recognition. That is recognizing that achieving your goals isn't about white knuckling your way to success. By accepting this fact, You'll stop mentally pushing yourself for stumbling or failing to stick to your plan, which will leave you emotionally freer to optimistically try again tomorrow. Number six, start small so you can finish big. This may sound counterintuitive, but one of the best ways to change your mindsets and realize your dreams is through setting ridiculously tiny, utterly achievable goals. How tiny? How about this? One push-up. If your goal is to get daily exercise, then your small attainable goal is to do a single push-up each day. If you want to reduce stress in your life, your tiny goal might be to meditate for one minute every day. If you want more affection with a loved one, your mini goal could be one extra hug or kiss. Each of these examples requires almost no motivation or willpower to accomplish. And yet, each is a positive step. Here's the trick. Decide that your tiny goal is the minimum and that you can do more if you feel up to it. A lot of the time, you'll do more and feel great because you're overachieving. Some days, you may do the minimum. 
and you'll still feel great because you've met your goal. How can these tiny goals actually make an impact? It's because massive change requires small steps, repeated daily, which create momentum and yield positive cumulative results. The top 8% of achievers understand this, but most people never try this strategy because they think it seems pointless to start so small. Wrong. Over time, consistently hitting your small goals will form new mindset habits, and that's real progress toward revamping your thinking so you can reach your biggest dreams. Number seven, get comfortable with the F word. The steps for how to change your mindset that I've outlined so far will help you move forward with confidence toward achieving more of your goals and dreams. However, it's critical to understand that it will be hard work. That's why high achievers are comfortable with the F word, failure. When most people hit a wall, they make an excuse or give up. High achievers realize that the only thing that will keep them from their goals is to stop trying. So they don't. They know that they'll encounter obstacles and even fail along the way. What separates them from the other 92% is they prepare for failure mentally. They know it's coming and it doesn't scare them or make them give up. When failure happens, they seek feedback and make adjustments to get back in the game. You can do this by giving yourself permission to fail. It will take the pressure off getting a perfect end result, and you can be ready to learn from mishaps and mistakes and make adjustments that will keep you moving forward. Changing your mindset doesn't happen by accident. It happens by choice, and these seven steps should help you get back on the right track. Holy cow, who wants to top those stairs in Philly with me? Feeling down and unmotivated? How about take control and look for motivation? Instead of booking your pity party table for one, realize there is inspiration, heartfelt messages, and plenty of go-get-it attitudes just waiting for you to consume. Make it a part of your every day. Can't conjure up a good attitude on your own? No worries. Start your day with a devotional or a reminder to let it go. Create a Pinterest board with quotes and memes that say something to your soul. Explore an uplifting podcast like this one, wink, wink. Find a book on adventure, overcoming adversity, or a simple pleasure of life to remind yourself there is good all around you. Your new direction only presents itself if you're looking for it. Clear out the cobwebs of past regret. Shut off or excuse yourself from the water cooler negativity nonsense and look up. No, really, look up. How often do you do that? Want to imagine an expansive world where anything is possible? Look up into the sky and let your mind float away. Let's stay there for a minute. And remind ourselves of the things that are under our control. Your beliefs. Your attitude. Your thoughts. Your perspective. How honest you are. Who your friends are. What books you read. How often you exercise. The type of food you eat. How many risks you take. How you interpret the situation. How kind you are to others. How kind you are to yourself. How often you say, I love you. How often you say, thank you. How you express your feelings. Whether or not you ask for help. How often you practice gratitude. How many times you smile, 
each day. The amount of effort you put forth. How you spend or invest your money. How much time you spend worrying. How often you think about your past. Whether or not you judge other people. Whether or not you try again after a setback. How much you appreciate the things you have. This list was by Caleb L.P. Gunner. I hope you've received some golden nuggets that you're going to apply to your life right now. Maybe starting tomorrow, but definitely this week. How you can change your mindset. What is actually in your control. What you consume. What you let take root. What you let bloom and impact other people can definitely change your direction. Where do you want to take your life? What would you like to happen next? How would something so powerful change your life? Can you see it? Can you visualize what you would like it to look like? Don't forget to look up. Sky's the limit. If you want to share encouragementology with a friend who needs to know they are not alone in this journey of self-discovery, you can visit encouragementology.com or anywhere you stream your content to receive this episode and all others. Follow us on Facebook for additional encouragement throughout the week. So I challenge you, let go of Lady Luck and grab on to what is in your control. Today, you can change your mindset inviting in thoughts and feelings that surround you with love and inspiration. This renewed and positive energy will help you find a new direction to explore and change your life. I know you can do it. Thank you for listening to Encouragementology with Kendall Boyson, where we find positive ways to handle some of life's challenges. Someone through until the path was clear. 